G'day, nerds. Welcome to the feature match area once again, round number three, coming your way with me, Riley Knight, and joining me as well. If you thought it didn't get any better than having your old pal Riley Knight in the booth, if you thought it couldn't get any better than that, well, you're right, because Corey Baumeister's here as well. What an intro, Riley. Thank you so much for having me. I feel so blessed to be here with you. Mate, honestly, we're going to have a great time today. We're going to have a oh, great we time. I can, I can tell you that much. We've got Kai Buddha, <laughs> one of the greatest of all time. Largely speaking, a, an auto include in people's top five all-time Magic players, even if he is, uh, you know, certainly a juggernaut of a bygone era, uh, playing up against Kenta Harani here. Both of these blokes are two and O, oh, and uh, is it control here? We did see white in the graphic, of course, because there is Yori on the on the sideboard, white card against Jess Guy, who knows what's going on? Not me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And yeah, for Kai, I don't care what era you're in. If you win seven premier events, come on, you're you're still doing it. You're still uh, doing just fine. So it's going to be a great match. Oh yeah, here we go. So it looks like a very reactive hand for Kai here. Got some removal, got some counter spells, but this is exactly the sort of hand that you want. How does this matchup work? I like... I don't know what this Jesco Mutate deck is trying to do, man. Is it a control deck? Is it a combo deck? It's it's on the more controlling end of things, right? Yeah, it's definitely on the more controlling side with having that, you know, oops, I win button when you assemble the the very easy combo of uh, about five cards. But I think both decks are really trying to prey against these creature decks and trying to really stop all these Edgewell Innkeeper decks. So once again, not really prepared for either one of the decks, even in their both of their bios, they were not really expecting each other's deck to play against a ton. Kai does think he's favored, while Kenta thinks this is pretty much an even match. So uh, we'll, we'll see here this is going to be a close one here's my recommend one of these cards we talked about already today uh just very very flexible and we're seeing that flexibility here as it gets rid of i mean a null main deck dude what's going on there Corey? <laughs> a null in the main deck for those of you who don't know a null typically a sideboard card if that typically it's the sort of yep. it's the sort of the 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 14th pick bit of draft chaff that you're like wait is this card even legal in the format uh but it's being main decked here in this deck mate yeah, no, Anola, you know, really showing its chops here, mostly trying to take down a Zika's Chariot. But in this matchup specifically, one of the main things that we're going to see post board that Kai is actually pretty afraid of is these Maze Mind Tomes. They're so good. And being able to have a turn one play to answer that when you're on the draw is basically unheard of, right? When you're on the play and you have a Tome, it's just, yep, buckle up. You're going to be drawing a lot of cards. You're going to be wildly ahead. And your opponent has to usually be the aggressor to fight that kind of card advantage. But when you can just, a Nolan on turn one. Easy mm. game. Also, a Null is in the set too. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> a uh, decent start here for Kai, although is he missing a land drop here? He needs to... I mean, this is a control deck, right? You need to hit land yep. drops more or less every at every point. Yeah, exactly. And at least in this matchup, Kenta is going to have to throw just creature after creature and try to be the aggressor here. So even if Kai's missing a lot of land drops early, as long as he's drawing, you know, permission that lines up correctly against Kenta's threats, it's still going to be pretty strong here. But eventually, of course, you're right. You need to draw out of it. So Vadrock here. It's just a naked Vadrock. No mutate or anything going on there. But it does have one of the coolest animations here. I love this. Look at this. Kabam! <laughs> that Surprise. is pretty nice. And I mean, three mana, three, three flying first striker, still a very powerful threat that has to be dealt with. Eventually we do see some frostbites here. So that's going to be uh, pretty easy to take care of, um, but still a very powerful creature. Yeah. Frostbite as, as an effective lightning bolt against creatures is, is very, very good indeed. Yeah. And even as a shock, I mean, it can do some work, although we've already described two toughness creatures as <clears throat> Optimistic in the face of Bone Crusher Giant running rampant over the format. Frostbite here, a nice clean answer for this Vadrock. So the first question that Kenta Harane asks of Kai Border is easily answered. Yeah, there's not plenty willing more action to take... where that came from here. Yeah, not willing to take any damage. There's really no point. Kai just knows I'm going to frostbite this eventually. Might as well get it out of the way now. And Kenta might be thinking about fighting over this and into the royal here yeah to... that's kind of brutal well how how what, I don't, 
Yeah, there is a sword coming here from Kai, so maybe we're, we're not even going to have to worry about this question here because, yeah, the sword coming. So this is just a clean two for two trade here. Yeah. But obviously, Kentarane recognizing that he'd rather have the extra Vadrock in hand rather than the Into the Royal, which is interesting, is particularly when you consider that Vadrock is legendary. I don't know how much you want that second copy in your hand. Yeah, you really don't, but still being able to fight over it, it, it really pressures Kai to right. still want to use a counter spell there. Right, just right, because right. you do not want that into the Royal to draw a card as well as bring back Vadrock. You know, you kind of essentially two for one um, Kai off that Frostbite. So I think it was kind of a force saw coming, and Kenta knew that. Okay. Well, here's another Vadrock anyway, but this one's going to get chomped up by an Essence Scatter. Essence Scatter going to take it down this time. So Kai doing a good job of keeping the board clear, which is exactly what he wants to do. Double Disdainful Stroke isn't doing much against Kenta's hand here. And that's a Cinderclasm there as well, which also doesn't do a huge amount in this matchup, I believe. They're all three yes. toughness, right? Lord Dracus yes. and all the rest of them? Yeah, I think you really just have to pair it with another Cinderclasm to mm -hmm. just do anything. So definitely not the main deck card, not the matchup you want this type of main deck card for. Well, one thing that is really nice from Kai's side that we're going to see eventually here is just this creature land. The Hall of the Storms Giant just cracking in for seven. That's a three-turn clock. If, you know, Kai is able to recognize that there's not much going on from Kenta's side, it might be time to jam. But that is a big risk because if if your opponent does just drop Goldspan Dragon on you, you feel pretty bad that you didn't leave open Disdainful Stroke. Yeah, and that's what those disdainful strokes are really are really looking at targeting here. We see Prismari command. I'm gonna discard a land. And it looks like is that a burning hands there? Yeah. Yeah, burning clans or as a cinderclasm as well. Another card that is not very valuable against these is it decks either. Maybe might have, clean might up have been some two actually, two I sharks, I guess. But yeah, yeah not yeah. not too great there either. And a spikefield hazard joins the hand. Double Lord Dracus in hand as well for the Japanese player here. Yeah, not a great hand here for Kenta. Not a great hand for either of them, really. I mean, there is that... Yeah. Uh, it's very reactive from Kai's side of things. And I think, I mean, at this point, what does he want to do? Just keep hitting land drops so he can get on, get in on that Hall of the... Uh, hall of the I keep, whenever I try to go to say it, I'm always like, Hall of the Mountain King, right? <laughs> yeah, hall, hall of the Mountain of the King, mountain. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think that's what Kai's looking for, or just like sharks, right? Drawing sharks, being able to say, all right, if you don't have a gold span dragon, I'll cycle a shark. If you do counter it, um, that becomes pretty valuable. Yeah, dealing with just one of these two, three is not bad, but if they start bringing back a bunch of spells, that's mm -hmm. where it gets really dangerous. So right now, Kai is just like, please do not have another one of those to start chaining spells from the graveyard. So Lord Dracus, part dieu gets countered there and a bone crusher off the top again not super useful against this lord dracul so they can be combined with the cyndaclasm in order to take it down another little whiskey there for kenta finding a land that's not what he wanted to see do we just take out this lord dracus here i think so right yeah kai thinks so too we do right like yeah, you, you're not really two for wanting yourself because you do get the four three left over but those cards are just doing stone cold nothing otherwise so you may as well you may as well make them you know make them earn their keep here Bone yeah, exactly. going to come down as a uh, as a respectable threat for three. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how many pieces of removal spells each player leaves in after game one, uh, because you still feel like you want to have some, you know, into the royal as one of the removal spells from Kenta. That's going to still be great because it can bounce these sharks. But we're, we're probably going to see a lot of heavy changes from both players going into the sideboard of games to get some of those cards out of there. Just so many dead draws. Another Bone Crusher Giant here. And I believe that's a Cinderclasm. A little hard to tell. Yep, that looks like a Cinderclasm. Yeah, that and Burning Hands do look pretty similar. Yeah, they do, especially the uh, the showcase art as well, or the uh, the full art thing. It is, it is a little tricky to tell them apart there. Stopping the aggression from the 4-3 here. We'll see if Kai just wants to jam Bone Crusher Giant here or if he wants to get the value off the stomp side. I don't think you want to do both because that does leave you with only three mana and then you only have one stroke available. And let's say Kenta's hand is Goldspan Dragon plus Negate. It's kind of a train wreck situation. So a nice conservative play there from Kai, even though we know Kenta's hand is terrible. Mm -hmm. Kenta's hand looks a little bit more like a foot at this point and 
It'll be interesting to yeah. see what uh, what Kai wants to do, whether he does want to start. I mean, he's getting close to the point that he can wake up the hall and still, I think he can do it now, right? Have stroke. Yeah, can, yeah six and mana leave up is one stroke. Uh, if I'm, yep. Which, that's the risk too. If if Kai is really living in fear here, thinking, well, Kenta hasn't played a gold span during, there's got to be a couple in there he's trying to wait for. You know, probably wouldn't jam, but if he's if he's feeling and sensing weakness, it's time to get in there. This is a two-turn clock. Yeah, this is a huge attack here. Look at this, an attack for 11. And that kind of giving the game away here, showing that Kenta just has nothing. The auto pass from Arena and wow. another land off the top <laughs> for Kenta. He's just going to give it up. That is very unfortunate. The top of his deck not treating him very kindly at all. Griffin, land oh, after man. land. Yeah, that was high. awful. Kenta had so much card manipulation as well with Prismari Command, cycled some mm. triumphs and stuff, and just could not find any action there. It was uh, uh, really unfortunate. Some big changes here for Kai taking out, wow, look at that. Ten cards yes. coming out here. Double Burning <laughs> Hands, quadruple Cyndaclasm, as you'd expect, uh, in addition to two copies of the uh, powerful saga, Kiribati the Sea God, and Bone Crusher Giant as well. That two damage not at its best here. And coming in, just a whole lot of blue interaction. A little bit more value with stuff like Maze Mind, Tome, and a glimpse of, uh, glimpse of freedom. And uh, on the other side of things, it looks like, hmm, okay, just trimming down on a couple of things. Uh, the the dragon, the unsubstantiate, those, uh, oh, wow, yeah, uh, unsurprising <laughs> to see the uh, old uh, spoils coming out there. That is a disaster against counter spells. And coming in, hey, look at this, taking a different direction with Phoenix of Ash, Cub Warden, as well as some blue uh, blue counter spells and four maze mind time coil. Yeah, this really just shows off how much each of these decks were not prepared for each other with sideboarding just so many cards from each side. Mm -hmm. uh, and and Cub Warden agreed is just such a good card right now. It's some of the spicy tech that these Jeskai Mutate decks are playing, mostly for adventures again, just because it is a three five, which is such a tough toughness and power to be able to deal with right now you can't you can't chop it down you can't stop it you know it's just really a very difficult creature to kill yeah because it's white it doesn't die to burning hands it's a it's a exactly it's a profoundly useful stat line there the old three five yeah kai is definitely his hand is full of gas but no third land two expressive iterations which is excellent but it's a little risky when you cast it this early especially if you cycle shark Ooh. typhoon it's a pretty big indication that you do not have a land but kenta just cannot you know call the bluff here um because just does not have any way to interact so this is going to be right. excellent for kai picking up two lands yeah, very, very fortunate indeed, as uh, we'll probably see both of these lands in, in the uh, the Hall and the Spikefield Hazard end up being the ones that are picked. Just deciding which land to play here, if you want double blue in play right now or if you want double red. I think I like the Hall as well from Kai. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to discard here as well. And you can see, even after uh, trimming down on a lot of that red removal, still plenty of it here for Kai with uh, Frostbites, and uh, I mean, the Scorching Dragonfire is about to be discarded. Triple Frostbite, I mean, that'll get you across the line against these all these 3-3s three here, especially once you get that third Snowland. Yeah, that really will. And not exactly what Kai wants to be seeing here either, mm -hmm. just two tomes, just... That really says Kai has to kind of be pushing the game along. Otherwise, Kenta is super happy to just draw a card, say go, end step, draw two cards, say go. And that's a really tough spot that all of a sudden Kenta only starts playing cards when he just is about to discard. And that is yep. not a good feeling you want to be up against when you are the control player. No, I mean, look, we're looking at something that is close to, if not exactly just a control mirror here. And so a card like yep. Maze Mind Time, if it goes unanswered, uh, or, or if it's not met with, you know, a year... A, a similar level of card advantage on the other side, and we see a Vadrock here. It's going to do work and kind of punish Kai for getting rid of that Scorching Dragonfire. He doesn't have three Snowlands, I don't believe. No, he's got a Hall, yeah. um, the Spikefield has it, and then two Snowlands. And so instead, it's going to be Brazen Burrow just bouncing it here. That was kind of surprising to me to see Kenta playing something here when you have two tomes, you know, especially when you only have six cards in hand, just activating two tomes at end step and then having dispute open as well seems mm -hmm. pretty valuable. But instead, the shields are down and that just shows like that Kai's deck does not really play to the battlefield, 
in any meaningful way, even though this dispute would have been excellent Oof. against this. And oh no. Oh. Yauchi oh. and Kai can't believe it. Look at that. A moment of frustration here for the German juggernaut as he looks at three non-lands. He has not had good fortune when it comes to drawing lands in this match. He or in this game, I should say. He's really had to scramble for him. And now I think like he just has to kind of suck it up here and this is a this is a really really bad situation oh, he's yeah. going to have to discard the hand size he's going to keep them at the mystical dispute tuck away maybe then a gate i mean does he just play the stomp so he can play the bone crusher later on God, maybe or maybe you cycle i don't think we'll have to discard oh, the hand size at discard, least excuse me. no 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 he doesn't have to discard excuse me but yeah okay. that is just not terrible. as bad Being... as i thought yeah, just being able to put in one more snow land to have frostbite to be able to kill a bunch of things. You know, this Vadrock that's pretty likely to just come down again would be excellent. And having some counter magic to be able to play. But yeah, that's uh that's sometimes the rough scenarios with expressive iteration. So mystical dispute now. And because of the way that Kenta's lands have worked out with the double mountain draw, he can't use his own mystical dispute to get uh, to uh Try to contest that fable passage. A welcome draw here for Kai. Right on time. Well, you say that, but last turn probably <laughs> would have been a bit better. Yeah, that's what I was hinting at. That's for sure. <laughs> but now we're in shark territory from Kai, being able to just either mm. react and just hopefully chain together sharks. You know how we were talking round one into the stories are great at finding other into the stories. Shark typhoons are pretty good at finding other shark typhoons as well. And that's definitely what Kai is going to be looking for um, to start putting some pressure on these maze mine tomes. And triple frostbite is going to be key here as well against all of these three toughness creatures. Obviously it doesn't take down a, uh, a dragon, but it will get rid of a something like a Lord Dracus. Having said that, I can just fire off two of them to get rid of this Goldspan Dragon. It sucks. You can do it. Instead, Disdainful Stroke waiting in the wings there. So yes. Frostbite is actually going to, I think, is going to be use, very useful in this matchup for Kai. Yeah, I think so too. And I'm still just slightly surprised by jamming all these things out here, especially when Kai just has open mana and is missing land drops, because it's pretty clear that he has a lot of permission spells instead of just saying go, drawing a bunch of cards with Tome, and then eventually yeah. just overloading Kai. Um, that way he doesn't use his mana as efficiently every single turn. Yeah. But Kenta has different plans. Different plans indeed. And, and it, it does surprise me because, yeah, you know, if, if, if those. I guess the typical approach in a control mirror is you just wait. You wait and wait and wait. You never want to be the first person to blink. You never want to be the first person to tap mm -hmm. out and commit a threat to the board. But Kenta, he's just like, nah, I'm not here to take prisoners, man. I'm, I'm getting I'm getting stuff on the board. Here's a cub warden. There is another counter spell for that. Or the double frostbite. We'll see what Kai Gonna wants to do. need a lot do. of frost to take down that cat. That's for sure. Ah, just two. Just two chomps. That'll, that's just two <laughs> chomps, mate. That'll, that'll get rid of the cub warden. Fair, fair. Yeah, interesting here. I see an Essence Scatter, so the choice is just do we want to Essence Scatter this or save that for Goldspan Dragon? I think Essence Scattering either or is great because they're both just such to deal with, such tough to deal with threats. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be Essence Scatter, and Kent is not going to fight over it with Dwyer Disruption or a mystical dispute and a shark here for one as well so kai making full use of his mana and this is exactly what you want to stop control players from doing if you just draw if there. you just render their mana useless each turn you'll pull a yep. long way ahead here's another expressive iteration is this going to be fought over oh it's in a gate excuse me i thought it was a dry disruption but no it's in a gate Yep, that's in a gate, and uh, Kenta has just been seeing Kai miss land drop after land drop, so it's pretty mm -hmm. clear that we need to be digging for that, and Kai gets to at least just play one. It's a little risky to play the other one, especially with how his fortune has been with iterations earlier in this game. Get to leave open one side coming, but here's the big turn for Kenta. If Kenta can find Goldspan Dragon and use that dispute to back it up, it's going to be really strong. Even a cup warden there was a pretty good draw to be mm -hmm. able to get something meaningful on the battlefield. Yeah, actually start to get some traction in this game. We're going to see cup warden come down. Three and a white, three, five, lifelink. The mutate ability not going to be super relevant at this stage, but saw it coming in a response from Kai. Now, will this tempt out the mystical dispute? 
Yes, indeed, it will. So, Kenta oh, on the board might be coming now in. with double Dracus as well, and that will start to fire off both, both the mutatability of the Lord Dracus, returning things to his hand, but also making some cubs. Yeah, and just looking at how Kai's deck is set up here, we don't have a lot of Cinderclasm left in, which makes sense. It's not a very good card post-board, but do you want to just be frostbiting these 1-1s? One like, that's not a very good plan, and that's kind of all Kai has. This is going to be a really tough game for him to win, and I was just thinking that... Kai's best tool outside of Shark Typhoons in this matchup really seems like the Hall of the Storm Giants. Like, that card just seems so tough for Kenta to deal with. Yeah, but when you true. have a bunch of cats, you know, lying around, it becomes a lot easier. Well, are, they, are they cats or, or are they lions, Corey? <laughs> oh! Red Cat Malay is another card that can take down the Cub Warden, but this is really tough. No lands as well for Kai. He's really struggled with his mana this time around. Yeah, and that's rough. That comes with sacrificing a land as well mm -hmm. and still mm -hmm. needing another frostbite. So, yeah, this is just not coming up Kai, that's for sure. So, Omen the pick. There's a land. That's very important. It's going to be... I, I think it's going to be difficult for Kai to say no to this land here. He does have a uh, haul in hand, but... I think another red source is going to be useful considering what's in his hand here. He takes the mountain. Yeah, and then it's just, all right, Ty, try to uh, race this 3-5 lifelinker, which is not an easy task. No. And here's the really rough scenario. That negate is face up, so Kai can't even go for double frostbite. You just, yeah, one will resolve, but the other one won't. It's and one. now, especially with Goldspan Dragon with this negate back up, uh, this looks like this game is going to be going to Kenta pretty easily from here. It's interesting because we were, we were sort of questioning Kenta's approach with his threat deployment, right? Like he was just yep. playing threat after threat after threat, trying to run Kai out of resources. And that is a plan that seems to have worked exceptionally well here. Now, whether that's because it was the right way to play it or whether it was more dependent on what Kai drew or more accurately didn't draw, having trouble with mana as he did, it's interesting to see the way that Kenta Hirani's game plan has really paid dividends based on the draw that Kai has had to play with here. He's been stuck with these dead, not, well, I don't want to say dead, but he's been stuck with these uh, three copies of Frostbite in his hand almost since the beginning of the game, unable to develop yep. his mana, unable to play out his game plan as he would want to. And so, I don't know, maybe Kenta just smelled blood and was like, I'm just going to slam threats here because, because Kai's on the back foot. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not going to question Kenta. Kenta's a great player. I may have played this game a little bit differently, but that's why I'm up here with you, Riley, instead of oh, yeah. uh, down here in uh, these rival gauntlets. Oh, much easier, mate. Just talk about it. Just talk oh, about yeah. it. Don't have to actually do it. Yeah, those who can't, commentate. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. It's the mantra of the entire coverage team, of course. Here is Red Cap Malay. It gets rid of the Goldspan Dragon Red Cap Malay. It's, I mean, it's... Oof. It's gone up and up recently, hasn't it? People are uh, really turned to this card in their moment of need, given the fact that it uh, it takes out a Goldspan Dragon relatively cleanly. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty interesting to me that uh, Kenta didn't want to negate to protect that, but it makes a lot of sense because if Kai just went land seven, Kiora best the Sea Gods, that's one way that Kenta could actually lose this game. So a really disciplined play there. Um, to not try to fight over that, even though Kai was essentially tapped out. Only one ra red mana available. Uh, no way to fight over that counter spell. But just Kiora Best of Sea God, the threat of that looming is just too powerful to deal with when you're when you're ground or when your battlefield is just all ground creatures trying to deal with it. So the double frostbite here actually taking out the Cub Warden. Um that negate being held here and as you say it is face up kind of knew about it but got rid of the cup warden here okay kind of started to maybe turn things around a little bit yeah definitely but this gold span dragon with um the mutate here to get back another counter spell is going to be devastating especially since we have two treasures over there which translates to four mana kenta's mm -hmm. going to have a ton of mana and it just oh and another one there oh lord dracus is is oh going to probably close this game out because these Lord Draguses are free. If you put it on Goldspan Dragon, it's just free. You get that right. treasure back. Yeah. You get an yeah. immediate two-mana rebate, don't you? Wow, you get a kickback. 
Exactly. And I mean, we get the trigger from Lord Dracus here to bring back one spell. And now we get to put another Lord Dracus on there and then get two triggers to bring oh, back two more spells. Oh, so if oh, there's more it. counter magic in the graveyard, sure, I'll take that back and lock Kai out of the game. If you don't, why not take some expressive iterations, some two mana divinations and just keep finding more gas. So looks like doesn't even need to uh, uh, mutate it on here. Just says, yeah, this is enough. Yep, I'll hold on to this uh, negate. I'll hold on to this mystical yep. dispute, and that's going to be enough to get me across the line here. And it looks like he may indeed be right. Yorion in hand here for Kai, but with only seven mana, you know, I mean, you can see how many lands Kenta Hirano has, and, and and that's where you want to be at this at this late stage. Still, double maze mine time as well for the Japanese player. So things have certainly gone about a lot better for him. We saw in game number one, his draw was just atrocious, just way too many lands. Whereas this time, there's been a good mix mix of action and reaction, and as a result, he's well out ahead. So he's we can Yorian. resolve this Yorian through the dispute at least, which blinks Brazenbar and Omen, um, but you know, what is that really gonna accomplish? And this mystical dispute to me just spells out like, yeah, I have this game, you hmm. can have a Yorian, you can blink this, and uh, next turn, returning enough spells, maybe some Prismari commands in the graveyard and stuff like that, to be able to uh, put the last points of damage over the edge. Well, as you said, that Lord Dracus, not only is it free, of course, with the uh, the dragon, it also brings back two pieces of interaction, presumably. It might be, just be enough to to clear the way. We're going to see Maze Mind Tome activated, draw a card. That is an it's unsubstantiate. That is enough. Yep. So that's that's all that's that's the that's the ball game here. Unsubstantiate bounces the Orion. Lord Dracus on the dragon to bring back unsubstantiate and something else if needs be. And I think that is going to be all she wrote here, sports fans, because Goldspan Dragon and the Cubs can come across for the final points of damage. There's another unsubstantiate protected by a negate. And Corey, yeah. we're going to go to game number three. Go to game three. And this was one of those scenarios, Riley, where Kenta probably could have just started comboing off here. But we're going to see this more often than not, where you just, yeah, I just bring spells back that interact with what my opponent's doing and just win the game in a little bit more fair of a way than mm -hmm. having to combo off. But it was there. If there was a Prismari command in the graveyard, you could have just done it, uh, um, you know, comboed off right there as well. So Kenta's approach there really did pay off. Whether it yes. was the right approach to take well that's a different question but his approach of being very proactive playing those vadrox out aggressively we were questioning it we were saying why are you doing this you know make the control play waste their mana don't let them use their counter spells but kenta obviously recognized that if he started to you know draw towards those dragons holding on to those lord dracuses to buy back the interaction that he was using as well mm -hmm. it had put him in a very good spot and as a result he walked across the uh the finish line Pretty easily there, I would say. Kai, once again, cycling a Shark Typhoon for zero. He's kept a two-lander, but this time it's going to go a lot better for him as he finds lands three and four before uh, it's too late. So it's looking much better for the German Juggernaut here. I think based on the way these hands look, Corey, we're going to have a much, much uh, more even game. Yeah, this looks a lot more fair. Uh, Kenta really, the story of last game was Maze Mind Tome. It just looked so mm. insane here if, if gone unchecked. And and this game's going to go a lot better for Kai drawing those lands. Because if we did not draw lands three or four there, having to just play expressive iteration on turn three would have been met with Mystical Dispute this time. And that would have just been devastating. Well, here it is now on turn four instead. And again, much better hits here. Much yep. better hits as we see Omen into the hand, pathway into the deck, and a snow-covered island which will turn on any frostbites. Yep, we are frostbite live. We get to cast an Omen here, get to play mm -hmm. some more lands and start cycling sharks. Uh, everything coming up a lot better uh, for Kai, but yeah, these Phoenixes of Ash just coming back, you know, every third turn or whatever when you start using a bunch of different spells is going to be a bit of a problem here. Omen, cast a little preordain here, scratch it or a card, sees ah, two decent ones. You can probably bottom the Omen, but even if you keep it, it's not bad. Mystical Dispute, oh. definitely a card you're interested in holding on to here, seeing as it's a one-mana counterspell for most of what your opponent's working with. I don't know if I've ever bottomed an Omen of the Sea in my life when I'm playing a Yorian deck. I just, I can't bring myself to do it. It's like, just think about it. It gets to replace itself, and eventually with Yorian, it's going to come back. But uh, Kai disagrees. That, you know, oh, never mind, still oh. had it. <laughs> <was another> one. <laughs> 
the uh, the MTGO scry bug has mutated and spread all go. the way to MTGA here. <laughs> as we see a uh, a mountain played once again. So yeah, things looking much better for Kai. Much much better. There is this Phoenix of Ash, but hey, it's easily answered. Although the first time potentially, second time maybe. But is this a game? Is this a matchup, Corey, where the recursive ability of Phoenix of Ash? threatens to take over you know we've seen it in yeah. matchups like rogues and, and other other prolonged situations where you do have, end up having a full yard is phoenix yeah. of ash a, a potent bit of technology in a slower matchup like this one yeah i really think it is you know this is probably how escape was maybe designed to be played is just playing against a deck that's trying to answer all your threats and every third or fourth turn you just get to bring back a threat um, against rogues, of course, we see it just go completely nuts and you get to do it every single turn. But yeah, this is still going to be pretty valuable. But Shark Typhoon there was a huge tempo swing at making Kenta pump it to not do anything else that turn and yeah. still dealing with it. That was a huge exchange for Kai. Kenta couldn't have been too happy about that because that's a tough play to go for as well. Like if, if Kenta just had a way to kill that shark and then play something big, that would have been a, a really bad play for Kai, but Kai just sensed that there was not that much removal left in in these post board games and just went for it. Looks like we're going to see a negate on this expressive iteration as well, and, and this is a play that I quite like. Again, we saw Kenta to, to great effect getting rid of Kai's expressive iterations in game number two. And constraining yep. your opponent, yeah, making them miss land drops. Kai's got that, uh, his spidey sense is tingling. He recognizes that he's ahead, and he wants to keep it that way. So he's playing a more aggressive game with his interaction he's being much more proactive with his reactive elements and i like to see that temple off the top here continue to make sure the uh the spice flows so kai's got some options here you can play yorian with dispute backup no matter what that's resolving that is an option for kai or can play that shatter skull smashing untapped and have essence scatter available as well but let's say there was a counter spell then gold span dragon um to kind of tap out kai it becomes pretty risky and that's a way that kai could actually lose this game so we'll see if he wants to be a little aggressive here or not without a shark typhoon he doesn't have anything to do if kenta doesn't play anything so this one's a tougher choice but kai choosing to be a little bit more conservative here prismari command is going to activate the faithless looting and treasure making mode here oh wait there's a card that actually just makes a treasure isn't there prismari command making a treasure no 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 because you know how like you, you'll say like on um colligan's command you'll be like shock shatter right yes and prismari command uh does faithless looting and i'm gonna have to get the name of the card it was in modern horizons 2 it's red yes it, it has flashback yeah 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 <laughs> yeah and uh i don't know the name of the card it is it's on arena i played against it yeah, you dug yourself into a hole there, Riley. Yeah, I re I was I was typing furiously on Scryfall. Strike it rich. There we go. Yeah, chat's going to get you. Going to cover you your back. No, no, no. It was just me. I just remembered it because I'm a professional. Don't even worry about it. Strike it rich was, uh, was what it was there. So, yep. Strike it rich, faithless looting. Doesn't quite ring, uh, roll off the tongue in the same way that Shock Shadow does. Not as much. Yeah, well, how about we just go with Prismaria Command on that one and, and go with the modes? It seems easier, but, you know, you're the expert here. We'll uh, uh, We'll follow your lead. I'm going to see reveals field of ruin and a null. I I can't. I, I mean, every time I see an null, man. I mean, I guess it's game three, so it's fine. But just knowing that's a main yeah. deck card now, it's wild, man. Wild. What, what a time to be alive. I what agree. a world we it live is, in. It dude. is incredible. <laughs> what a world we live in, man. And just for the one card from Kenta, like that's that shows how good. Mm -hmm. You know, Ms. Maze Mind Tome is in this matchup because think if Kai just has a temple and a, and a snow-covered mountain as his lands, can't even cast a null on Maze Mind Tome on turn one, you know? So even if you have it, the mana base doesn't always agree with you, so it is a very questionable one at best. Here's a, here's, let's see. I mean, Corey, you're, you're a magic boom. Everyone everyone knows that. When Absolutely. was a null first printed? In which set oh, was a null man. first printed? You know, I just, whenever they give me the cards to play with, to build decks yeah. with, that's when I know it's it's legal or not. Right. And when it comes to when it was printed and stuff, I'm terrible at that. So I'm going to have to leave that to you. Oh, All wait, right. wasn't it Antiquities? <laughs> that I'm just getting from my brain right now, you know. Well, your brain needs a bit of a checkup, mate, because it was Urza's Saga. So, no, not quite. <laughs> I've not been quite. Set up. I've Urza's been set up. Saga. 
<laughs> yeah, Urza Saga then mirrored and and uh, and Theros as well. It was good that it was in okay. Theros, obviously enchantment based set there. But yeah, a surprising inclusion in um uh in I remember when when the card was previewed actually in Kaldheim. It was yeah. oh, it was very bad that preview. It was very, very bad. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those cards like Negate, you know, like you just expect yeah. Negate to always be le legal in every set. Yeah. So when you see it spoiled, it's like, oh, that's not already here or is yeah. it spoiled again? Or I just yeah. remember the person who's who the person who previewed it was just they just uh, it's clear they weren't taking it seriously. You know, it's clear that there's just it was just a, they're making a mockery of the whole card preview season, really. I'm going to guess it was angry. you. It was me. I made a song. Oh, okay. I made a song and I did a little <laughs> song about a null being in the set. I did. <laughs> Oh, you're a treat, Riley. You're a treat. Thank we you loved your much. songs. A little treat. A little, little Riley yeah. is a treat. That's it. I still have some of the songs that you've made for preview cards stuck in my head, and it's, you know, months later. So yes. living rent-free up there in so many different Long ways. will drive you mad. This song oh, no, drive don't you do mad. it to chat. <laughs> Omen of the Sea here being sacrificed in order to scry. And both of them going below decks here for Kai Buddha, who rips a Jwari disruption over costed four spike, potentially not what is wanted here. Although, into Hirane, a little short on mana. In comes the Sky Noodle. And here's not a whole be, lot of business here. Here's going to be a great turn for Kai. Right now, he has the option to go QR best the Sea Gods with a counterspell backup. That's a little risky, so decides not to do it. Now, um, Kenta is kind of forced to play things because Yorian is a real clock. So now mm -hmm. Kai gets to be like, okay, do I want to start countering these things? And if not, it's giant shark time. And unsubstantiating a shark, that is still, you know, a nice little two for one for yourself with Kai being able to draw a card off that. So this is exactly where Kai wants to be in this matchup. Interesting. With, position their, with here your for opponent Kai. blinking first, you know. To consider with Vadrock. Gonna let it resolve. Couldn't really do too much about it. Could have could have shark typhooned into something, but I don't know. I don't know if that's what you want to do, especially when you do still quite clearly um, outpace and outmuscle this Vadrock on the battlefield. No follow up to the Vadrock as well. We're going to see a shark typhoon here for a hundred billion. Yeah, and we'll probably see Kenta have to deal with that right now. You know, seven seven shark here mm -hmm. is quite the problem. And if Kai gets to untap and draws a negate or something, the game just ends. Is that a mind flare? Oh, baby, mind flare is back once again. Ooh. Best card in standard here to do it once more. <laughs> you just said that about a null, so make up your mind, buddy. I never said a null was the best card in standard. <laughs> I never made that. I'd never go so far as to, okay, as to do okay. that. So mind flare here. It looks like we've got we've uh, we've got insurance against the mystical dispute, and a handful of counter magic as well here. Saw it coming. Now, is this enough? Hang on one second. Yes, test of talents. Okay. So, yep. So we have test dispute. of talents, dispute. We can get the, what, turn 15 Dwari disruption on yeah. this dispute that's probably going to be cast. Oh, no. Actually, that's super hot. Yeah, I mean, it always feels good to force spike someone. Always feels good to get a mana yes. tithe happening here. And so let's see if Kent is going to go for it. Very, very difficult not to. In this situation, is the treasure token there to the right of screen? In order I mean, to cast it's, it's, what do this you, dispute, like this dispute isn't even you know we we don't even need anything. You just pay for it. So it's a really really tough spot here. And it's like, yeah, do you wanna do you wanna pay three? I think we'll see Kai just pay for this because it's the same as Dwari disruption. Even though it's just so tempting just to so, get a Dwari it's so disruption, tempting to, like to force spike it right. Like you're down a yeah, card, but you are up so, so far ahead. In the in like in terms of a moral victory, you know what I mean. If you're seeking yeah. that out, the other option, and, and on a more serious level, the other option is to cast Test of Talents on it. Yeah, and this is the, the reason for this is now Kai doesn't have to play around Mystical Dispute anymore, and that's not worth nothing, you know. Yeah, and information of what's in the hand as well. Uh -huh. Gonna see just Lord Dracus, and with with that being the only thing that Kenta has. Kenta really needs a removal spell for this Mind Flare right now to be able to put this Lord Dracus on to have any chance at this game. Ooh, that okay. could be good. So, Vadrock, Mutate, Dracus, or is it cheaper to do it the other way around? It's the same, nope, isn't it? You wanna, you, no, you want a Vadrock because it's four to mutate. Four to mutate. Oh, and it's only two yeah, to so mutate the Lord Dracus, excuse me. So it's not only exactly. not the same, it's way cheaper the other way around. Yeah, it's five mana yeah. as opposed to seven. Ah, but numbers right. are all made up anyway, so... You know, all made up, but... Who can really is, say? 
<laughs> this is pretty big here. Now, there's not any clear way to deal with Mind Flare that I saw, but you still get to, like, you can unsubstantiate, I guess. I guess that's not great if you bounce the Mind Flare, but you could bounce the Vadra. Up from this omen of the sea here. And now that Kai has perfect information here, it just might be time to play uh, the strongest saga in standard right now. Kiora Best of the Sea God is just incredible and mm. doesn't really matter if there's flyers everywhere. Getting an 8 8 down when you're still at a comfortable life is going to be insanely powerful here. I'm actually kind of surprised that we saw that upkeep scry instead of just casting that. So Prismari commands, strike it rich and faithless looting here. I'm going to discard the saga here, Corey, a twist. You know, I don't question uh, the German juggernaut here, but yeah, that play seems uh, pretty wild to me. Um, just being able to slam that card with a disdainful stroke backup and just have, you know, what, 15 power on the battlefield as well as Kiora's second chapter tapping Kenta down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Seemed like yeah, a powerful play, but of course Kai's still in a great spot here. Yeah, I think, look, Kai could probably, you know, blindfold himself and spin the wheel around and still get there. But <laughs> here now, Vadra coming down for, I think, the third time so far. But as it is now, this is lethal. Obviously, Kenta can make more plays, but with Stomp and one unblocked creature, this will be enough. Yeah, and it looks like we can also just flash in that Brazen Bar as well. So I don't mm -hmm. see a way out. I think it starts with being able to mutate onto this Vadrock. You have to unsubstantiate Yorian. Um, to be able to stop that from being a lethal threat. And I, I suppose that, that keeps you alive. But then Brazen Borrower plus Stomp would be lethal as well. So we need another, we need another thing to stay alive. So even with Vadrock being first strike and being able to eat Mind Flare or eat Brazen Borrower, the other three is still going to get yeah. through. And then Stomp will get it done. So Kenta Hirani here right up against it now, and, and he knows it as well. He's he's desperately trying to think what, what sort of thing he can do to uh, to change the way that this game is going to pan out. He doesn't have much in his graveyard. I believe there is just an unsubstantiate and a, I think, a counterspell as well. Yeah, there was a, on that. Let's have a look. There was a side coming. There was expressive iteration and then unsubstantiate. I think those were the only three yeah. that I saw. And the expressive iteration is back in the hand, so I think it's just unsubstantiate and a uh, and I saw it coming here. Brazen borrower in response to these triggers here before anything can uh, be flashed back or put in the hand. There's the saw it coming, and we're going to see the unsubstantiate cast for free on the Sky Noodle. And this. That is that. That is that. So, I think there's that there's no unknown cards in hand here for, for for Kenta. I think Kai has perfect information. This the is other the interesting thing, that he thing can, here. 
Yeah, go on. Sorry to interrupt you, Riley, but Yorian here really forces the counter spell because if you blink Mind Flare here and take it, you win the game, and now it's over. Now we yes. get the stomp. So that was the card you couldn't counter um, if you were trying to stay alive this turn. But if Yorian resolves, you're taking Vadrock. You're going to win the turn after. So it's not like that was ooh, a big misplay or anything. But it just so happens that Kai wins with this line this turn. And he would have won next.